When it comes to mirrorless cameras, Canon has built a reputation for knowing exactly when to step in with something that shakes up the conversation. That's why the rumors surrounding the Canon EOS R7 Mark II have set the photography and videography world buzzing. This is not just another refresh, not just a simple tweak to an existing model that's shaping up to be a serious leap forward. In this first section, we're going to unpack everything we currently know about its possible release window, the changes in design and ergonomics, the likely sensor and processor upgrades, and what all of that means for photographers and filmmakers. By the end of this section, you'll have a detailed picture of why the R7 Mark II could be one of the most important AppCC cameras of 2025. Let's start with timing, because that's often the first question people have. When can we expect to actually see this camera in stores? According to credible leaks from sources like Canon Rumors, the shipping window is currently targeted for early Q4 2025. In other words, if nothing changes, we could be looking at early October for units to start hitting the shelves. This makes sense when you look at Canon's typical release patterns. They often make their big announcements in late summer or early fall, lining up availability just ahead of the holiday season. Interestingly, there was talk about a dealer presentation that got delayed. Some people worried this meant the launch might be pushed back, but so far, speculation still leans towards a September announcement that would give Canon just enough runway to generate hype before those early shipments begin. In the wider rumor mill, there were even earlier whispers about a Q3 launch. But when you combine all the chatter, it still points strongly toward a late 2025 horizon. This aligns with a broader strategy. Build anticipation through strategic leaks, then drop the product just when demand is peaking. Now, release dates are only one part of the story. The more exciting side dot, least for many of us, is the design evolution. The R7 Mark II is expected to take clear inspiration from Canon's higher-end full-frame body. The R5 Mark II. This is not just a cosmetic decision. It's a functional one. The R5 Mark II body style brings a denser, more substantial grip, refined button placement, and a more robust feel overall. These changes signal that Canon wants this APS-C model to feel like a pro-level tool in your hands. That's especially important for photographers who shoot for hours in challenging environments. Whether it's a wedding hall, a wildlife reserve, or a bustling street. The slightly larger body footprint could also mean better heat management and more durability. That matters a lot for video shooters, because overheating has been a pain point in some past models. And here's where things get really interesting, rumors suggest the R7 Mark II might be compatible with the same cooling grip accessory that debuted with the R5 Mark II. If that's true, it would be a huge win for people who shoot long video, takes or burst sequences. Extended performance without overheating is something creators have been asking for, and Canon seems to be listening, moving inside the body. The heart of any camera is its sensor, and this is where the Mark II could really distance itself from its predecessor. The current talk points to an all-new approximately 33-megapixel APS-C stacked CMOS sensor. If you're not familiar with stacked sensor architecture, here's the short version. It allows for much faster readout speeds, which in turn means less rolling shutter in video and faster burst rates in photography. In fact, the rumored performance here could push the camera to about 40 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. That's dangerously close to flagship territory. Matching speeds we've seen in top-tier models like the EOS R1, the processor, setup is equally impressive. We're looking at a dual-engine system combining Canon's trusted DIGICX with what's being referred to as a DIC accelerator. This pairing should translate to lightning-fast image processing, smarter subject detection, and overall smoother operation. The benefit here isn't just about speed, it's also about efficiency. Faster processors mean better autofocus tracking, more accurate exposure adjustments, and the ability to handle high-resolution images without slowing down. Let's not overlook stabilization because that's another area where Canon seems ready to make a statement. The in-body image stabilization system IBIS is rumored to be upgraded to deliver up to 8.5 stops of shake compensation. For an APS-C camera, that's a serious achievement. It means you could shoot at slower shutter speeds handheld and still get sharp results. For travel photographers or anyone shooting in low light without a tripod, that's the kind of upgrade that changes your creative possibilities. On the viewing side, the electronic viewfinder is expected to remain at 2.36 million. Some might see that as modest, especially compared to higher-end full-frame models, but it's still more than capable for composing shots and checking focus. And if Canon pairs it with a high refresh rate, it could still deliver a smooth, natural, viewing experience. Then there's the video side. And here's where the R7 Mark II's hybrid nature really comes into play. We're talking about 4,000 recording up to 120 frames per second in 10-bit color with support for Canon's C-Log3 profile. That combination is a dream for content creators. It gives you high frame rate flexibility for slow motion, rich color, depth for grading, and a professional log format for cinematic work. Add to that an in-camera upscaling system that enhances footage on the fly. 
and you've got a tool that could rival much more expensive models for video quality. Another standout feature could be the pre-continuous burst mode. This function captures a short sequence of frames just before you fully press the shutter button, meaning you can grab moments that would otherwise be impossible to catch. Wildlife photographers, sports shooters, and even parents trying to capture a child's split second. Smile will appreciate how game-changing that is. When you put all these rumored specs together, the R7 Mark II starts to look like an incredibly well-rounded package. It's not just faster or just higher resolution, it's a balanced upgrade that addresses multiple areas at once. That's important because the original R7, while popular, did have its weak points. If Canon can improve build quality, speed, stabilization, and video features all in one generation, they'll have a compelling reason for both existing R7 owners and new buyers to invest. Now, let's touch briefly on pricing, even though nothing official has been announced yet. The original R7 launched in the $1,500 to $1,900 range. Depending on the kit, analysts think the Mark II could land a bit higher, possibly between $2,000 and $2,500. That would reflect its more professional build and advanced features. Some community members on Reddit have already said they're fine with paying more, as long as Canon fixes the known issues from the first model, dot in the end. The Canon EOS R7 Mark II seems poised to redefine what we expect from an APSI mirrorless camera. It's aiming for professional-level performance in a body that's still compact enough to travel with, pairing high-end speed and stabilization with versatile video options. If these leaks hold true, this could be the go-to choice for wildlife, shooters, hybrid creators, and professionals who need power without the size and cost of full frame. And we haven't even touched on deeper competitive comparisons or long-term. The Canon EOS R7 Mark II isn't launching into an empty market. By the time it arrives, the APS-C mirrorless segment will be more competitive than ever, with Sony, Fujifilm, Nikon, and even Panasonic each trying to carve out their share of the serious enthusiast and hybrid creator space. That's why understanding where Canon is positioning the R7 Mark II is just as important as knowing its specs. In this section, we'll break down how this camera could stand up against its biggest rivals, what market strategy Canon seems to be following, the long-term value for different types of users, and whether it's a smart buy in the broader landscape of 22.5. Nikon is another one. While they've been more focused on their full-frame Z series, the Z50 and ZFC have built a loyal base of APS-C users. Nikon hasn't yet released an APS-C stacked sensor camera, which could give Canon a performance edge in late 2025, if Nikon doesn't counter quickly. The R7 Mark II could attract users who want a fast, modern APS-C body without jumping to full frame. This strategy could also be about ecosystem building. If Canon can hook creators with the R7 Mark II, they might eventually invest in RF mount glass, which can be used on both a PSC and full-frame Canon bodies. That means a photographer could start with the R7 Mark II for speed and reach, then add a full-frame body later for other work, all without changing lens systems. It's a long-term play to keep users in the Canon family down now. When we talk long-term value, we need to think about three things technology, lifespan, lens investment, and resale potential. First, technology lifespan APS-C sensors have matured, to the point where yearly upgrades aren't as critical. A well-built camera, like the R7 Mark II, could easily serve as a primary body for four to five years before feeling outdated. Second, lens investment if you build a kit of high-quality RF lenses. You're future-proofing your system because those lenses will work on higher-end RF bodies. Third, resale potential Canon gear tends to hold its value better than some rivals, especially when the model in question is seen as a sweet spot in the lineup. If the R7 Mark II delivers on its rumored performance, demand could remain strong on the second-hand market for years. There's also the psychological factor. For many photographers, knowing they have a fast, capable, and versatile tool breeds confidence. That confidence often translates into better work. It's not just about specs, it's about trusting your gear to handle the shot you envision. If the R7 Mark II nails reliability, that trust will grow quickly in the community. We should also consider the downstream effects. A strong R7 Mark II release could push competitors to respond, potentially sparking a new wave of APSI innovation. This benefits everyone, not just Canon users. But in the short term, it gives Canon the chance to reclaim dominance in the APS-C performance segment, an area they've been relatively quiet in while focusing on their full-frame R-series, of course. Nothing exists in a vacuum. By late 2025, there could be surprise announcements from Sony or Fujifilm that shift the conversation. But Canon has a habit of timing their releases strategically, making sure their product stands out, at least for a few crucial months. If they hit that September announcement and early October release window, they could dominate holiday sales and set the tone going into 22.6. In conclusion, the Canon EOS R7 Mark II looks ready to blur the lines between a PSC and full-frame performance. It's a camera that seems designed to challenge assumptions, offering pro-grade speed, stabilization, and video in a body that's smaller, 
lighter, and more affordable than most full-frame setups. For wildlife shooters, sports photographers, hybrid creators, and even professionals who want a powerful second body, it could be the most exciting APS-C release in years.